HVAC starts right here with this one word called thermodynamics. One word, thermodynamics. But it means two different things. Thermo means heat and dynamics means how something works. So thermodynamics means essentially how heat works. And in HVAC, we specialize in moving heat. That's essentially what we do. Now, as we go through this, there's gonna be a lot of points tied in to thermodynamics. And I'll have some student at some point in time say, do I have to understand this? And no, you don't have to understand this. There's a lot of people that's made money changing out parts and doing maintenance and even doing service work that don't understand thermodynamics. But if you really wanna take that professional step in your career, if you really wanna be that specialist, if you really wanna take pride in what you do, yes, this is where it starts. I love my friend Joe Kikinda who came up with the phrase thermodynamic energy specialist. And this is really what we all should strive to be, is thermodynamic energy specialists. We know that specialists get paid more. Specialists take a lot of pride in what they do. So a thermodynamic energy specialist is somebody who takes pride in what they do. We take pride in moving heat. We take pride in our trade. I love the fact that we have this new term, thermodynamic energy specialist. Joe started this, as far as I'm aware, back in 2017, and he's been promoting that, and I'm right behind you, Joe. I think that's fantastic, and this all starts with thermodynamics. So let's get started with what thermodynamics really means. We have several laws. We're gonna talk about the first law here today, and the first law says energy, and now heat is energy. So let's get that together. Heat is energy, there's electrical energy, there's heat energy, there's pressure energy. We're gonna be talking about energy in relation to heat. So this law goes, heat or energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. You may also know this as the law of conservation of energy, saying that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. Thermodynamics, we use the same word, except also in energy, we use heat as well. So we're just transforming energy from one form to another. We're not creating energy, we're not destroying energy. So let's take a little look at what that might mean. Here we have something you might be familiar with. It's just simply an iron. Uh, I put a nine on mine, so this is my nine iron. But this is simply an energy conversion device. What it's doing is converting electrical energy, watts, in the heat energy BTUs. It's an energy conversion device. I'm not creating heat, I'm really converting it from electricity in the BTUs, which is heat. So another one you may be familiar with is this little hot plate here. It is also an energy conversion device. It is converting electrical energy, watts, in the heat energy BTUs. So we're just converting energy. Very simple little component, as well as we have another one here, which this is the guts of a toaster, which lots of HVAC parts we'll talk about later, but this is converting electrical energy, watts, in the heat energy BTUs. But let's go a little bit further. There's other things that we do as well. We can convert electrical energy, watts, into horsepower. And with that horsepower, I can move it to a fan and move air or move water or any other kind of substance. So we're converting electrical energy into horsepower, anything that's spin that's horsepower, and we can move many things with it. We can also convert energy into photons. So here we got this light, turn the light on, it creates photons or light energy. It's all different types of energy. But that energy still has to come from somewhere. One familiar form of energy is a type of gas, propane or natural gas. Here it's a potential energy and we light this up, it becomes a kinetic energy, but it's converting it from one energy source to another. Heat energy. It also puts out photons as well. So it's energy source. We're converting it from one source to another. And we also have combination devices. In this case, I have a heater converting watts electrical energy and the heat energy BTUs, as well as a fan, which is horsepower, so I can move the air across those heating elements. And we can take wind energy, convert it from wind and the horsepower, the horsepower into electricity. The electricity can go all across the country to another location. We can turn it back to wind again, or to heat, or many other sources. You could also think about we have water at the big dams. The water is potential energy. As it flows through the turbines, that's now horsepower. The horsepower then it converts and turns against windings, a magnet inside of windings, which converts it to electrical energy, and we can convert it into lights or multiple different things. So it's just a conversion from one source or one form into another. We're not losing that energy, it's just being converted. Now we do have some losses, such as that motor. It's not just simply creating horsepower, it is also putting out a, a certain amount of heat in there. Many types of light energy or photons is actually converting 
into a heat energy as well. LEDs are better about producing photons with less heat, but you have a lot of the older light bulbs that put out a lot of heat. That's a lot of heat energy as well as the photons. So to really understand this, we need to go another deeper level. So let's go into that deeper level. And we're gonna start off with essentially this right here. And this is something you can't be trusted. Anybody have any friends named Adam? Well, you can never trust an atom because they make up everything. So what that means is we have this as a representation of an atom. So we're going to have a nucleus and it's going to have protons and neutrons in it. And we're going to have electrons flowing on the outside. And this will be in motion all the time. And everything is made up of atoms. It makes up the air. It makes up me and you. It makes up the table. It makes up this background. Everything is made up of atoms. Now those different atoms fit together to make different types of molecules but everything is essentially from these atoms. And what's cool about these atoms is they're always in motion. It looks like this table is solid, but really all these molecules are in motion. As I add heat energy, these molecules move faster and faster and faster. As I remove heat energy, molecules move slower and slower. I can add so much heat energy to metal, I can make the metal melt. So that's a lot of heat energy. Those molecules are moving so fast, they're getting to be fluid. I can also remove heat energy from those molecules and that steel will turn to a solid. I can remove heat energy from many different things, such as think about oxygen. We think about oxygen being in a vapor form. But we can take so much heat energy out of oxygen, we can make oxygen turn into a liquid. We can take even more heat energy out of oxygen and make it turn into a solid. Yeah, you can have oxygen as a solid. Same thing with dry ice, CO2, it could be a solid, a liquid, or a vapor. It can be any of those different forms. That's heat energy. So let's think about how low can you go? How low can that heat energy go? Ludicrous asked, how low can you go? And there is an answer to that. And that answer is absolute zero. That's how low you can go. You can't go lower than absolute zero. Absolute zero is zero degrees Kelvin and zero degrees Rankine, depending on what scale you're using. But that is the absolute lowest number. But that same low point, that same absolute zero has other numbers. In Fahrenheit, it also means minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm rounding. I know there's going to be some science people and math people that want that specific decimal. I'm, I'm more concerned about the gist of this. Minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. That is incredible. I mean, that is super, super low. That is what we call true cold. And if you're in the rest of the world, other than the U.S., it's minus 273 degrees Celsius. Incredible lack of heat. At that temperature, that is what we call true cold. So a lot of people use the word cold, and cold means, definition, an absence of heat. So true cold is minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 273 degrees Celsius, zero degrees Kelvin, and zero degrees Rankine. That is absolute zero. All those numbers mean the same thing. All of this motion stops. All life form at that point stops. But here's the other thing. It's also unobtainable. Now, scientists have gotten within a fraction of a degree, and there's arguments if they've actually achieved it or not, but we've really come within a fraction of a degree of obtaining that, but we can't actually attain, obtain it. So, in reality, cold does not exist. There's either going to be more heat or less heat. If you walk outside and it's minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 20 degrees Celsius, same exact number, you're actually going to have tons of heat still left in the air. To you and your feelings, it's cold, but in reality, cold does not exist. It's less heated to you. You're losing a lot of heat. You don't like it, but it's not really cold because cold is zero degrees Kelvin, zero degrees Rankine, and absolute zero. All molecular motion stops at that point. So that's very important because I want you thinking about it this way. And this rest of this course, as I talk, I'm going to not be using the term cold unless I use it in quotations because I want you thinking that cold does not exist. It's simply an absence of or a reduced amount of heat. More heat or less heat. This is important, especially when we get to heat pumps. Heat pumps are going to be pulling heat from outside and bringing heat inside the house. So it can be, say, um, zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, and there's still 460 degrees of heat still available outside. So even though it may be cold to you and your feelings, it's less heated. Still tons and tons of heat available. We have a walk-in cooler. You go into a walk-in cooler, a walk-in freezer, I'm sorry, let's talk about a walk-in freezer. You walk in there, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Zero degrees Fahrenheit. 
there's still 460 degrees of heat to remove. You go to some blast freezers, they'll be at minus 20, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They're removing a ton of heat, but guess what? There's even more heat still in there. We get into cryogenics where we get down to even lower temperatures than that. So I need you thinking about heat as energy. When we get to the zero Kelvin, zero Rankine point, that's where we have no more of that heat energy left. It's all been removed. It's all been transformed to some other form. Anything above that is heat. At 100 degrees Fahrenheit, there's really 460 degrees of heat. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, there's still 460 degrees of heat. And at minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit, there is 260 degrees of heat still in the air. So you think more heat, less heat. So nothing is actually gonna be cold because true cold does not exist. So that's what we're gonna be using. Now, when you're talking to normal people, cold doesn't exist, you probably wanna stay away from that. But as you're thinking about the course, think of something warmer than or cooler than. Now, let's think about what's happening in a room. If you go to your room and you're touching things, you're going to be touching different material and different things are going to feel a different temperature. But that's going to be heat movement. Everything in a room is typically going to be about the same temperature. We're going to talk about that in the next video when we get into the second law of thermodynamics. So let's just do a quick re recap. Thermodynamics is heat, how heat works. We really want to strive to be thermodynamic energy specialists, thanks to Joe Kokinda. And we also want to think First law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. Cold does not exist. If you're going through any of your HVAC classes, they talk about absolute zero and conversions in math. I don't teach the conversions anymore because now we have this. So there is math. If you go to the books, there's math steps for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit to Rankin to Kelvin. But in reality, I just use my phone now to quick little conversion for it. You can do the long math for it, but it's a very simple conversion. 0 degrees Kelvin, 0 degrees Rankine, minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, and minus 273 degrees Celsius is all the exact same number. Anything above that is heat, and that is your lowest point. That is where no heat exists. So that is the first law of thermodynamics. Stay tuned for the second law.